Hello, my name is Alexander Hagen, and I am the CEO of a small medium sized tech company in Silicon Valley. And I've been a financial journalist, a research engineer, I've filed several patents. This is my letter I re received from President William Jefferson Clinton back in 1999 when I supported him when everybody else was trying to grab him and strangle him. And I'm bringing my letter out today because I'm asking him to stop the butchery of loyalists in Libya and the massacre of Sirt. To talk to Hillary and talk to, have her talk to President Obama and put an end to this madness. Here's what the CBS Evening News has to say about what's going on in the city of Sirt. <clears throat> This came in today, the 11th of October, by Alan Pizzi on the CBS Evening News. <clears throat> in Libya, the former rebels raised their flag Monday over a convention center in Muammar Gaddafi's hometown, Sirte. But the battle is still raging, block by block, house by house, as pro-Gaddafi forces seem ready to fight to the last man. CBS News correspondent Alan Pizzi reports that the last Gaddafi loyalists holding out in his hometown are being mercilessly ground down as the latest, quote, final assault, unquote, gains brutal momentum. An almost ceaseless attack using rockets, mortars, and heavy machine guns has moved the front lines forward more in the last two days than even the attackers expected. But with nowhere to run and no reason to expect mercy, the hardcore of what's left of Gaddafi's forces aren't giving up ground easily. Reinforcements of former rebels continue to charge the gap in the protective wall to head for the front line, spurred on by the scent of victory and a cry that is both call to arms and prayer. They are prayers they feel are answered when comrades in arms meet, joyful that each has survived to fight on. Abdurraf Sadi, an oil field engineer turned fighter, says he has no choice but to be here. This is the price of freedom. We never knew freedom before, Sadi said. By the time the prize of Seert is won, there's not likely to be much left that's actually worth having. But the value of the men fighting for it isn't material, it's psychological. Its fall will signal the actual end of Gaddafi. Not everyone in Gaddafi's birthplace is loyal to him, but the fighters who now control the rubble are jumpy, fearful that snipers may still be hiding here. The assault on the last bastion seems designed to make sure none survive. The massacre that is, this is now me speaking, the massacre that is being underwritten by the United States underway in the city of Sirte uh, is horrific. It is under siege by TNC forces. It's being bombed from overhead by American allied aircraft. The city of Sirte has been denied access to food and water, which is against the laws of war, both written and unwritten. People that are fleeing are being arrested if they are suspected of being too sympathetic to the old government. The primary tribe of Sirte is, Al is the Gaddafa meaning Gaddafi tribe. Anyone with that name will be arrested and mistreated leaving the city. The retaliation is very harsh. You know, this is something I'd like to address to President Obama and Secretary of State Clinton. You know that you armed Islamic radicals to attack a secular country where women had equal rights. You know that the rumors about black mercenaries led to indiscriminate lynching of innocent young blacks alienating many blacks in Libya and around the world from the new Libya you have created. You know that people in Tripoli and all over the country are being arrested and threatened and beaten and even killed for flying their country's loyalist green flag or even being tracked down having said anything supportive of the former government. You know that we have conducted 10,000 aerial attacks on Libya, a country with a population smaller than New York City. You know that the loyalists said that they would agree to elections back as early as May. Whether they would have done it or not, by not calling them on it, we will never know whether all this blood that is on our hands is uh, morally justified or not. We can only presume that it isn't, because if you don't, somebody says they're willing to make peace and have elections and you don't take that off the offer, whose fault is that? You know that we have wiped out at least 10,000 young Libyan service women and men and created at least that many families missing a family memory member. Proportionally, this would be like a half a million American families at minimum losing a member. And that this has permanently alienated at least one-sixth of the population because through kinship, that's about how many people would be related to them through clan, not through tribe, because it was tribe, clan, family. 
just at the clan level alone, you've got a sixth of the population that lost a family member <laughs> basically being assassinated from the air by this uh, 500 to 1 campaign in the air against this small country. You know that Beni Walid, one of the cities being encircled, cut off from food and water, buzzing with predator drones and NATO bombardment, surrounded by rebels, is home of the largest tribe in Libya, a tribe of perhaps one-sixth of the country's population. How will they like your new Libya after you've done this to their capital? You know that at least half of Libyans belong to tribes that are opposed to the TNC and NATO, the Warfala and the Tarhuna, to name just two. Just those two alone represent a quarter of all Libyans. You know that you have never honestly discussed the pros and cons and mechanisms for reintegrating the millions of Libyans who may be very frightened of the future of liberated Libya, who may prefer to have the peace and quiet of their repressive old government over this violent tearing apart of their liberated society. <clears throat> and you know that Gaddafi was a very unique man who said what he thought plainly, a Bedouin who rose to power and tried to realize a dream for Africa and Libya and perhaps failed, but you know Gaddafi was not like any other leader that we have demonized. My question to you is where is your conscience? How can you sleep at night breaking so many moral principles and twisting this UN resolution to allow cities to be encircled, cut off from food and water, and then attacked with heavy weapons while being bombed by planes of your military alliance? You know these bastards are fighting like we've never seen anyone fight for in decades at 501 odds for seven months. You know that privately many in our military are impressed by their bravery. Please make this persecution of loyalists, this nightmare of defeated side in a civil war, be humiliated, beaten, cowed, starved, imprisoned, and disenfranchised. Stop. You can make all this stop if you choose to. How can you sleep at night, having turned Libya into a living hell for those not eager to embrace this liberation of incredible violence? And if you think that there will, you have impunity and that this will never come to haunt you, you should think again. Look what happened to Pinochet. Look what happened to Kissinger. And the world is not like it used to be. Brazil and Russia and India and China, these are all places that are going to rise in power. It's not like with Pinochet and Kissinger, where the West still was the dominant force in the world. As you gray and age, this could very well make your lives very difficult. So for your own sakes, as well as the sake of justice and decency, put an end to the harassment of the loyalists in Libya. You have the power and resources. I beg of you. Thank you.